Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Hunger Games movie thoughts. Very briefly, I should maybe say, yeah, I'm gonna be spoiling the book in this one. The film practically spoils the entire book, obviously. And yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know both and I'm gonna be comparing them, so just so you know. Now, as promised in the review, I will try to start with, for those who haven't, you know, if you haven't already watched the movie, but you just want to know, is this, you know, did this make it into the movie from the book? Because there were certainly some things that I was wondering myself, are they really going to put this in the movie? Is this going to work in the movie? Yes, Rue and Katniss have this sort of, you know, brief alliance, and, you know, it it works as a sort of with with Rue sort of being the surrogate primrose, you know, the surrogate prim, the surrogate baby sister, you know, complete with the singing and the funeral. Yes, Peter, you know, manages to disguise himself in the, you know, with, in fact, in the film, it's really impeccable of a. I, I don't quite buy that he just pieced that together by himself, but anyway. Yes, the genetically enhanced animal dog things are there, although in the film it's not really, it's not said outright that they are made from or whatever, the, you know, dead tributes, but I, don't know, I thought that was a pretty weak aspect of the book myself, so I didn't mind it personally. Yes, Thresh saves Katniss on account of Rue, although they don't have the tense, you know, confrontation. You know, Thresh just kind of saves her, and he's, you know, he almost sort of already knows that she helped Rue somehow. Yes, the tracker jackers are in it, and no, I still can't help but think of cereal boxes when I hear that name. I think that is about it. I should maybe also give this away if you really must know if the about the love triangle. Now, I might have misunderstood in the book, but I really the way I understood it, at the end Peter feels like Katniss doesn't love him and he's, you know, he's he's bitter and he just wants to almost get away from her, you know, once they get back to the District 12. I, I think actually the last sentence of the book is something like she, she's, you know, she's anxious about when he will let her hand go, you know, she doesn't want to ever let his hand go, but she realizes, you know, because finally she herself realizes that, you know, she's in love with him, you know, she wasn't ready to let herself, you know, love him. That's also just, that's that entire aspect works you know, better in the book than the film. The the film doesn't establish as much, you know, or or really, yeah, you know, it doesn't come across as much in the film that she is too reserved to love. She doesn't, you know, she she's having trouble just taking care of the the people she's already taken care of, and she, you know, she's worried about, you know, something like children, and just, yeah, you know, and she's not used to, you know, her father died, and then her mother went catatonic, obviously, she has trust issues. So, yeah, you know, that entire thing. So, yeah, anyway, just gonna go ahead and say it. The film ends with her smiling during the interview and saying, oh, I couldn't imagine life without him. And so the conflict at the end of the film with the love triangle is, should she stay with Peter or go back to Gale? 
Whereas in the book, it's kind of which one of them should, should she choose, and can she even convince either of them? Because isn't Gale... Do note, I haven't actually read, you know, I only know the first book, so I don't know anything that happens in the other two books. You know, can she convince Gale that it was all just an act? Or, you know, can she convince Peta that she only too late realized that she does love him? You know, I th think that's the more interesting conflict, but, yeah. I gotta say just briefly, I like the book, I don't love it. One thing I didn't really care for in it, the... The wish fulfillment, you know, I get the sense that, I don't remember her name, but the author, the female author maybe kind of wanted to improve her own adolescence. So she wrote this, you know, don't get me wrong, it starts out with Katniss being in a awful situation, obviously, but then everybody's telling her how wonderful she is. She has all this wonderful food to eat, and she apparently doesn't gain any weight. She, you know, everybody loves her, and suddenly she has two men fighting for, you know, which one she'll choose, essentially, you know. All this stuff, I don't know, I just... Doesn't do anything for me. I don't like wish fulfillment. I prefer it to be more sort of realistic and more pragmatic, but anyway. I thought that the... I love the tracker jacks. Can I just call them wasps? Will that will, will any of you, you know, smack me over the head with a book hardcover if I just call them wasps? You, you, you can't because you don't know where I live. So I'm just going to call them wasps. I love the bit with the wasps where she's just using the knife to saw through the, you know, the, what's it called, the, the branch. And you just get this sense that these are really... I mean, even if Caesar hadn't said it, although it was probably really good that he did say it, because otherwise people who hadn't read the book would be like, huh? When they started to take effect and, you know, cause hallucinations and death. But you just really get the sense these are dangerous. You know, even if a character says, ooh, these are dangerous because they do this, that, this, and that. Even so, you still actually need to you know, make them threatening, you know, you can't just have someone say, oh, look at that, that does that. You need them to be threatening, you do that with camera work, with sound work. Both of them, great. You know, the, the close-up of the, and it's just, it's humongous, you know, it's like the size of Katniss, you know. And the, the sound that they make, and just how, how aggressive they sound and look, and that she's sawing through it, and she gets, you know, stung several times and just keeps sawing. You know, there is that kind of, it's, it's that determination that we love about Katniss. You know, it's that, you know, she's willing to push it that far. That, that she's that, yeah, that, that worked really well. And the hallucination itself, I don't know, it was, it was fine, you know. The... You know, and, and the appearance of, I don't remember her name, but, you know, the bow girl, when, you know, she has to grab the bow, that was, of course, a thing that, you know, excuse me, in the book, yeah, that bit's very much R-rated, you know, they could not do what they describe in the book in the movie without an R rating, not on a PG-13, so, you know, they just had her really... But, but yeah, she looked dead, and it looked like it hurt when she died, you know. And I think just, and, and the amount of blood and the way they do the violence, because you do actually have, you know, you have someone speared, you have someone knifed in the back, you know, you have, yeah, you, you know, Cato actually does get, you know, bitten by these, you know, big, brutal anim animals and, you know, killed with a mercy shot, with, with the arrow. So, you know, you have all this stuff and they show just enough 
And I mean, I mean, just the image, the image of Rue with that spear in her chest. That is devastating. And that is where I'm really glad that they didn't waste that, you know, I'm sure the censors were just frame by frame checking for all the violence. And so they wisely decided that this was somewhere that there needed to be violence because this is something that you need to, you know, that needs to have an impact. And it really did, you know, it really got to the audience. And the Rue funeral and the singing, that is a scene that could so easily devolve into sap. And it did not. It was sentimental, it was sad, it was tragic, but it was not sappy. That they did excellently. The fireball sequence was also quite nicely done, and, you know, and with the, you know, I, I, that, that's another aspect where the, you know, they were, they went as far as they could with the PG-13 rating. That burn, that looked horrible. And I don't mean as in, you know, the effect, although once she, you know, Apparently, you know, the, the, the medicine thing worked really well because it went from a very bad burn to just very bad makeup, you know, so that's, that was, that did great. But yeah, when you first see that burn, that looks painful. That really looks like, you know, and, and just, and that she keeps moving, <clears throat> excuse me. That really has you, you know, yeah, this girl really is just, you know, going all the way. She's really giving her all to, excuse me, to get by. I'm not sure there was much else. Yeah, that might pretty much be it. If there's anything else you want my opinion on, you know, be sure to post it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.